Welcome back, traders and investors, to Benzinga's Pre-Market Prep, brought to you by MarketFile. I'm your co-host, Joel Alconnan, along with Brianna Velasky, and we have Ethan Powell on the line, Chief Product Strategist for Highland Capital Management. Ethan, how are you doing today? I'm doing well, Joel. How are you? Good, good. Uh, glad to have you on the show. Uh, could you give us just a little bit of uh, you know, your background and uh, how you ended up in this position with Highland Capital? Sure. So... Highland Capital Management is a $21 billion asset manager out of Dallas, Texas. Uh, we've been running alternative investment solutions for over 20 years. I've been with the firm for a little over eight years, and I've been lucky enough to see an evolution in the firm where we've really started to morph from providing our alternative solutions in a 2 and 20 hedge fund structure, and more of open-ended mutual funds, and as of last week, uh, beta ETFs as well. Okay, all right. So, just um, before we go into the uh, you know the particulars, but just give us your your broad market outlook here. Major rally since two thousand nine. Uh, bit mm -hmm. of a break up here at uh, I guess all time highs. Uh, could you give us your perspective on the market? Yeah, and that's one of the reasons why we, we decided to uh, get into the ETF beta market, because as you know, over the last five, six years since the trough in 2009, uh, risk assets have rallied hard over 200%, and you've had a huge beta trade with high levels of correlation, low dispersion or returns. So uh, basically, if you were in the market, you enjoyed a pretty nice ride. We think that's over, right? We think that going forward, you're talking about um, a flat to slightly upward trending risk asset environment, but with a much higher level of volatility. Um, and so for us, offering some alternative solutions with lower lower volatility, but still with the ability to participate in some of the upside, I think that's really going to win the day going forward. So how do you do that? I mean, do you, uh, you, know, do you own stocks but have puts on the general market? Are you... Uh... You know, do you short stocks? I mean, how, you know, that, that sounds like a difficult thing to do. Yeah, yeah it is. And, and you know, there's really no substitute for active management. And we run four category leading actively managed funds in the mutual fund space. Um, but what we also noticed was there's a large swath of investors that all they really trade are ETFs and long only passively managed ETFs. And for us, our ETF solution represents an alternative to just being long only. As you said, Joel, some of the things that we do, we, we run three different strategies, um, and they each take a little bit of a different tilt at limiting volatility. Um, the first one is our HHFR Global. Uh, basically, it's a multi-strat hedge fund that we collaborate with HFR Hedge Fund Research on developing. Um, and with that one, you're really using not only – your short book to limit volatility, but it also invests in bonds, commodities, and currency. So you're talking about a diversified asset um, allocation in addition to having a net exposure in the marketplace of around 75%. Um, the second one is our, our uh, hedged equity, which, as you pointed out, is much more of a traditional long-short strategy. So there we're, we're not only having superior security selection on the long side, but we're also taking advantage of our short book and muting volatility through through that. And that uh, net exposure on that HHDG is about 50%. And then finally, we've got an event-driven strategy. And that takes advantage of hedge fund discipline uh, that identifies near-term corporate actions or other events um, it'll be a catalyst for revaluation. So if you think about what that means, that means you're really low on systemic risk. You're really talking about underwriting idiosyncratic risk um, uh, as it relates to a company-specific event. Um, and so that's kind of how we limit uh, exposure to systemic risk in all three of the strategies. What's the symbol on the last one that you just mentioned? So that's event driven. So it's D R V N for driven. Oh, D R V N. So, boy, you, these things are new, huh? You're just getting off the ground with these. Yeah, yeah, they're they're brand new. Um, we really it was the beginning of June when they launched. Their performance has been good so far, but we're excited. We uh, partnered with HFR um, to develop a 
I mean, we think is a superior sort of hedge fund replication in a passively managed format. Um, they've HFR, as you probably know, runs the HFRI and HFRX series of indices. They've also been conducting hedge fund research for over 20 years. Um, and what I think most people don't realize is the HFRX has separately managed accounts that underlie the index. Um, and through some proprietary sampling methodologies that HFR uses, combined with um, sort of stripping out a lot of the derivatives and illiquid positions from these separately managed accounts, they were able to create the HFRL, which is the liquid equivalent of the HFRX. So, um, you know, obviously, liquidity is a big concern in the ETF landscape, but uh-huh. um, one of the things they found was that um, by just choosing sort of 70 to 80 percent of the liquid securities within these indices, you can still get a a 90-plus percent correlation to the broader index. Um, and so that's that's really how we construct the index with, with HFR, and then our funds track those respective indices. So, like, how long did it take to create this? I mean, you, obviously you had the motivation. You wanted to do the product. There's a lot of ETFs out there. Just talk about the process of, uh, you know, doing it, putting it together, and uh you know, what it's going to take yeah. to, I mean, I see the volume's kind of light here, uh, you know, in order to get the volume up. Yeah, yeah and so I think it starts with having good good partners or, or folks to collaborate with. And HFR, as you mentioned, has been doing this for a long time. Um, so it took us, you know, a little over six months of really intensive work uh, to develop the HFRL. Um, you know, obviously, we were able to leverage their background in, in index creation, particularly hedge fund index creation. But look, we've been offering our hedge fund strategies in actively managed um, registered fund format uh, for over a decade. So we have a really good understanding of what sort of the do's and don'ts are within the registered fund environment. So I think we were able to expedite development of the product uh, pretty quickly. Um, so it, it wasn't as painful as you might think. Okay. Um, as far as as far as volume and distribution is concerned, um, you know, Highland has a 65 person uh, registered fund distribution infrastructure, so we've got a lot of distribution horsepower. We uh, manage about six billion dollars in registered, actively managed funds. Um, you know, for us, we're while we we it's a very different, as I mentioned, channel that consumes these passively managed ETFs. So we're going to go out and hire a separate and distinct sales force for these ETFs um, so that we can appropriately tap that, uh, that discrete investor base. Um, and you know, it takes a lot of just building brand awareness. We've got good brand awareness on the hedge fund side. We've got good brand awareness on the mutual fund side. And, and really, the next step for us is building brand awareness on the ETF front. Um, that takes uh, commitment from a capital perspective and from a human resource standpoint um, and, and you know, advertising and, and all of the traditional sort of levers that uh, what, what you see traditional ETF players uh, do in the marketplace today. Now, just going over all to, you know, just money management and the characteristics of the market, I mean, you know, the investing public has not participated as much in the rallies, you think. Um, you have some managers. I haven't checked out um, uh, uh, Clean Harbor Management, but some of these guys are really just lagging the market this year. And that's why, yeah. you know, on these pullbacks, it just seems that no matter what, that, that, you know, there's just buying coming into the market. These guys are, you know, they're already underperforming. They're afraid they're going to miss the next leg up. They react to everything. I mean, that, I mean, I don't want to say that there's just a, a permanent bid underneath the market, but, you know, just talk about, you know, overall, you know, manager's performance this year and how, you know, perhaps, you know, your products are, are you know, finding another, you know, another alternative to the markets besides your traditional money managers. Yeah, that's a good point, Joel. And year to date, you've seen actively managed mutual funds and ETFs take in net new flows of $28 billion, which seems impressive until you see that passively managed mutual funds and ETFs have taken in $182 billion. Uh, and, and that's consistent with last year as well. Last year, you had $40 billion into actively managed funds and $400 billion into passively managed funds. 
Last year, active managers, only 19% of active managers beat their indices. Um, now, so you know, this is an endeavor to create these passively managed funds that we think will outperform in a sideways, sideways trending, high ball environment. Um, it's not to say that we don't think good active management wins the day. Our active managers continue to be top decile in, in their category. So, so we do think that there's good active managers out there. It's really incumbent on the investor base to find them. But I do think, to your point, Joel, there's a huge amount of investors that are kind of giving up on the actively managed space. Um, but you know, with, with asset reflation where we are today, uh, risk assets are looking a little copy. It's our belief that, that those investors will find the need to take some money off of the long-only beta table and put it into something that's hedged. Wall Street Journal this, this week had a good cover story on hedge fund performance. And year to date, at, at the time the article was written, hedge fund performance using HFR indices was up over 5% in a long only market that was up right around 3.5%. So, what that tells us is that dispersion of returns are continuing to widen. Um, correlations within the equity markets are starting to drop, and and volatility um, is starting to pick up. And to your point, Joel, a lot of the volatility is just being driven by noise. I mean, I know um, we've you know, got headlines today, you know, Greek, a Grexit, will it hurt or help the euro? Um, you know, but from our perspective, you know, on our actively managed side, we don't think you're being compensated to handicap a lot of these uh, very volatile macroeconomic uh, situations. If you think about it, the Greek GDP is $240 billion a year. That's $10 billion less than the state of Louisiana. Right? We're from Texas, so we can appreciate that. But um, you know, to, to have a relatively small national economy driving the macro, uh, global macroeconomic debate uh, seems a little foolish to us, and and within our actively managed part of our business, we really try and isolate ourselves from that systemic risk. And if you look at a lot of the holdings um, within our ETFs, uh, you see a lot of the same uh, sort of positioning where uh, they're taking good company specific risk. They're isolating themselves from um, you know buying sort of buying the markets and trying to get into this risk on risk off behavior. Our ETFs are not really trading vehicles. They're not like these 3X levered or inverse ETFs. Uh, they're much more strategic holes um, with, an, with an effort to try and uh, mitigate some of the risk and volatility you see in the marketplace uh, through that sort of muted exposure to risk assets and being tactical and, and rebalancing on a monthly basis. Uh, and then sort of sampling that hedge fund market um, and getting what we hope to be best ideas out of that hedge fund community. And who would uh, you suggest, you know, take a look at your products? It, you know, is it someone, uh, you know, a, a young millennial looking to get into markets, looking for diversification? Is it someone that's been in the markets for quite some time here, wants to lock in some gains, have a little bit more of a conservative approach? Who are your products most suited for? Yeah, these three products are, are most suited for people looking for uh, lower vol exposure to equity markets. Uh, but, you know, I would also say that they're appropriate for small to mid-side uh, institutions. Yeah, last year, uh, very very publicly, CalPERS announced that they were leading the hedge fund market. But the practical reality is they weren't leading the hedge fund strategies. They were leading the 2 and 20 um, LP hedge fund wrapper and going into separately managed accounts and other sort of uh, vehicle wrappers. But um, they were still employing those strategies. And for us... You know, not everyone can afford to have a $500 million separate account with someone. And these, these ETFs offer access to those strategies in uh, a format that effectively has no minimums and uh, relatively reasonable um, pricing structure, 85 basis points, uh, certainly a far cry from the 2 and 20 structure. Um, so certainly, I, I would say institutional, very savvy investors that um, would still like to engage in these strategies but don't want to pay the 2 and 20. Uh, but I'd also say that there's a huge swath of investors, as those numbers that I stated would indicate, that are really moving away from active management into passive management. 
Um, and for those investors, you don't have much in the way of good options as far as uh, uncorrelated exposure to risk assets um, and having options within that sort of muted volatility uh, category. I think these represent um, the best available uh, alternative risk asset uh, access products in the marketplace. And I do think that a lot of those investors will be looking to rotate some of their long-only equity exposure into something that's a little less correlated and uh, a little more alternative in nature. We've been on the line with Ethan Powell. He's Chief Product Strategist for Highland Capital Management, uh, giving us a look at some alternative investments. Ethan, thanks a lot. We'll be keeping an eye on uh, your new products. Hope things go well, and we hope to speak to you again soon. Great. Thank you, Joel.